friends, welcome back to today's video. I have been wanting to share this for a long time and since Cassidy is now 13 months, I wanted to share my nursing and my pumping journey one year in review. So how I went from exclusively nursing to exclusively pumping, back to exclusively nursing and increasing my milk supply twice. Yes, it did not crash once, it crashed two times. But first I wanna thank ABC Mouse for sponsoring this portion of today's video. If you have followed me on Instagram for a little while, you have heard me share about them. I am able to sneak away right now and share this video with you guys because my girls are in love with sitting down and doing ABC Mouse. So ABC Mouse is our digital learning tool that we use for ages two through eight, and it covers all of the subjects from math to reading, language arts, social studies, science, art, colors. My girls have learned so much and it is so much fun. And I am very much of the mindset where I want my kids to love to learn. And I am able to watch where they are being, um, getting excited and we can use that and facilitate that and allow them to enjoy learning and bloom from there. So they will do their learning path or they will pick different subjects and either play games or do art and be learning about these things without feeling like they are sitting and being forced to, they're excited to, and they are wanting to dive in deeper to learning. So ABC Mouse is absolutely perfect for our family, whether it's me sneaking away to be able to film this video, or it's I want some peace and quiet while I'm getting dinner ready and on the table, or even this past year when I was sitting down pumping and felt very um, confined to the chair, I could kind of keep my eyes on everybody and keep everyone happy and excited. So you guys, I have two special promos for you guys. Option one, you can get ABC Mouse for $45 per year. Offer two, I have a free month of ABC Mouse and then $12.99 per month until you cancel. So if you guys are looking to try out ABC Mouse, see if you like it for your kiddos, just go down to the link in the description below. Thank you again, ABC Mouse, for sponsoring this portion of the video and honestly for creating a product that helps kids enjoy learning. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of this video and talk about all things lactation. Get everybody on the same page, whether you are searching out this content and just stopping by for the first time or if you've been following our family for a long time, I'm gonna quickly share our journey over this past year and then get right into my tricks for how I increased my milk supply and then I will go into the tips and tricks after that because I feel like when I was desperate to increase my milk supply, I wanted that information fast and quick and don't make me wait. So our journey started when we found out that Cassidy in utero had a heart condition and was gonna have to go straight to the NICU upon being born. So Cassidy went to the NICU and I started with hands-on pumping and pumping with a hospital grade pump. And I will get to hands-on pumping in a little bit. She ended up getting to go home and we were able to exclusively nurse while seeing a doctor to make sure she was gaining the appropriate weight. Remember that she had a heart condition and so she was monitored very closely and her growth was the most important thing that they cared about. She needed to get to a certain size or as big as possible so she could be as big as possible for her heart surgery. So we were monitored very closely. And at her six week appointment, she was starting to show that she was plateauing in her weight. We ended up going into the hospital. So when I was in the hospital, I ended up switching to exclusively pumping. And when I saw how much I made, I panicked. I felt like, oh my goodness, no wonder she's not gaining weight. I don't have the milk supply. She wasn't pulling enough. She wasn't strong enough to get all that milk out that she needed. And so my supply was drying up and we caught it just in time. I feel like if we had waited longer, my milk supply might have thought that's as much as I need and it wasn't gonna go up from there. But I worked so hard to get my milk supply back that first time. That one was the hardest to get my milk supply back because it had been six weeks of not having a strong baby to express all the milk that she actually truly needed. So when I was in the hospital, I was seen by lactation consultants around the clock 
and I was introduced to my favorite app. It is Huckleberry, and that is how I monitored how many times I was pumping, the amount, and that is where I saw that I was not making enough milk for her, and I was very stressed and very upset. So by the end of that hospital visit, Cassidy ended up with an NG tube to feed her milk. She was not able to nurse enough. She wasn't able to take a bottle enough. And so we ended up with an NG tube going home and making sure she got her calories in through her feeding tube. So at that point, I was exclusively pumping. So right at this time is when I looked into a tongue tie. And I just wanna give my two cents on this video really quick because I feel like it's so connected to nursing. So outside the hospital, we went to a lactation consultant and we got referred to get the tongue and lip and cheek tie released. And through this process, I ended up eventually seeing a feeding therapist. And I just wanted to share a couple of things that she brought to my attention that I just wish I would have known going forward because I feel like a lot of people are jumping in feeling um, to instantly go for a tongue tie release. And she just taught me a lot that I wish I would have known originally. So first I wish I would have gone to a feeding therapist first and had them really evaluate her tongue and jaw and her movement and her ability to feed well. So what she taught me is that with a tongue being tied down with a tight frenulum underneath, that is difficult to effectively suck. But she was saying there are two parts of feeding well and that is a mobile, the mobility of your tongue, as well as the stability. And so she said when she has seen some tongue tie releases, you are creating the mobility, but you are changing the stability. So the tongue now has to learn how to stabilize itself in a new spot and position. So she has just seen some people coming in for feeding therapy after a tongue tie release, having some very major struggles. So I am not regretting it. I think it is fine that we did the tongue tie release, but I wish that maybe some people would go see a feeding therapist first and really get a good evaluation before just jumping into a tongue tie release. So at this point we had a tongue lip and cheek tie release and she was still nursing and still trying, still taking a bottle but she slowly but surely stopped all of it. She became tired and had no interest in trying to eat by mouth. Fast forward until Cassidy was five months old, she ended up having her open heart surgery. Right around the two week mark, we were about to go home and she showed a little bit of interest in a bottle and started taking 10 mLs, 15 mLs, 20 mLs, an ounce. It was very exciting. And then when we went home, she would still take the bottle, but did not show any interest in nursing. So I would offer to see just trying to reintroduce, trying to show her it's okay to nurse if you would like to. And all of a sudden, one evening, she decided to nurse. I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely shocked. I was supposed to be keeping a very strict record of how much she was taking in because of this whole weight gain, cardiac surgery, all of it. I did not take a pre-weight. You can weigh your baby before and after a feeding in nursing and see how many mLs or how many milliliters of milk they take based on how many grams that they gain. So let's fast forward a few more weeks. She was showing me that she was nursing more. She was taking the bottle. It looked like she was taking some big volumes of what they wanted from her. They wanted her taking two and a half, three and a half, four ounces. By the way, at this point, she is pulling out this NG often. We were replacing it probably every day, every other day. And she would nurse these big volumes. And so we thought, let's let her try to get a little hungry and then she'll start taking more and my supply and her demand will even out. It'll be beautiful, it'll be glorious. Well, instead of it being beautiful and glorious, it ended up crashing my milk supply again. She was strong, but she was also just very content with the amount she was getting. She wasn't pushing herself to taking the bigger volume that she needed, and my supply 
met her right at the same amount. We decided to cut her off, switch her to the bottle and exclusively pump again. And again, I was below where she needed. Remember that Cassidy was a cardiac baby where she needed more calories. I was fortifying through some of this season to give her more calories because imagine running a marathon where your heart's pounding and how many calories you would need after, after that. That's what Cassidy was doing regularly, working her heart. She was burning a lot more calories and they just have the math figured out in the cardiologist of where her calories and her weight gain needed to be. So don't look at the numbers when I'm sharing this with you. It's just um, this idea that I didn't have enough milk and I needed a lot more and here is, let's just jump into it. Let me tell you how I was able to increase my supply. Okay, so let's now jump into how to increase your milk supply. I know how stressful and overwhelming and how many tears I shed throughout this process, really wanting that milk supply to be what I needed, to exceed what I needed, and for my baby to be full and satisfied. And so I am so sorry if you are searching out this video and you are wanting that milk supply. I'm just encouraging you to just be so kind to yourself and take a deep breath. But I want to share with you, if you are desiring to increase that milk supply, the things that really helped me, not once, but two times. So let's jump into it. So this first one is if you are starting off with pumping. So especially if your baby like ours went to the NICU right away, or if there is a specific reason on why you are choosing to pump, or maybe you are gonna just exclusively pump from the beginning and you know that that is your plan. So I, when I was a NICU nurse, encouraged all my mamas to watch the Stanford hands-on pumping video. You can search it, you can go find it, it's, it's not hard to find. But in the gist of it is when you are pumping, so I am going to be using my electric pump and I am going to be manually expressing while pumping or once I am done and I am done with my, my mechanical pump, I am going to hand express any remaining amount out that I possibly can. So with hands-on pumping, the biggest thing to remember is that it is worth it. It is worth doing. It seems like, oh, I'm getting the same amount anyways or what's the big deal? So when they did the research, they showed women that did hands-on pumping with their pumping and then women that didn't and just use, let the pump do the job. When it came to them having established milk, the women that did hands-on pumping had a higher milk supply as their established milk than the women that did not do the hands-on pumping. So that's why I encourage you to definitely, definitely, definitely do that. Or if you are now trying to increase your supply and you are needing to pump to do hands-on expressing, hands-on pumping while you are, um, while you are pumping. For those of you who are full-time pumping, I am telling you, amazing job. You are doing a full-time job. So let's talk about when I first increased my milk, milk supply. I was in the hospital, my baby was sick, I was so stressed, which is not where to start off wanting to increase your supply. Being stressed is not going to help, but I was so overwhelmingly stressed that my lactation consultant said, "You let's find a way to try to decrease that stress because if we want to increase that supply, we gotta relax just a little bit and definitely drink a enough water. So I also made sure that I was eating enough healthy calories. Philip made me some lactation cookies. You can research any recipe out there. You're just looking for something with a lot of good high fat content, good healthy butter, maybe some coconut oil, anything that's nice and dense in nutrients. And then a lot of them will have brewer's yeast in it as well. Now, do lactation cookies work very well? I don't know, but they were delicious as I was trying to sit there, pump, as often as I could. And that brings me to the second to top thing that you should do to increase your supply is pump. I know it sounds like, well, yeah, of course, but I, I'm saying pump. Eight to 10 times a day to increase your supply. So what you are doing is you are telling your body, no, it's not enough. My baby's still hungry. My baby's hungry. You gotta make some more. You gotta make some more. It is supply and demand. And so, when you need to pump eight to 10 times a day, 
wow, that's a lot. So I would pump, I would wake up and I would pump every two hours. And sometimes I would have a three hour stretch, but let's say I was getting tired, I wanted to take a nap. Let's say it's eight o'clock and I had just pumped at seven o'clock. It had been an hour, I would pump again. That would be my chance to get that extra pumping in because it is about pumping, not how much you are making. It's more about the stimulation and the input and the demand of needing to get some milk out than how much milk you made in that session. And I would um, pump again and then take my nap or go to bed or whichever I would have. And that leads me also to the app that the lactation consultant encouraged me to download was Huckleberry. And I really did love it because I could see on the summary and on the chart, how many pumps am I actually getting in in 24 hours? I'm thinking I'm pumping eight to 10 times. And then I look on my chart and see it's only six or seven. So that was super helpful. It kept track of how many ounces I was making and to encourage me when I would see that there was an increase or maybe I would drop down and I wouldn't be pumping as much and it would kind of dip down again. And it would encourage me, Alex, remember, don't just pump six times, try to get that seven and eight pump in and let's increase the supply. And then once we get established, we can maybe calm down a little bit. So I know a lot of times it feels like I wanna do a longer stretch and not pump eight to 10 times because I get, I get more milk. Over 24 hours, are you getting more milk? And the answer is probably no. And if you're getting a lot of milk with longer spaces, for example, when you first wake up in the morning, you're like, I rule. I am the milk making queen because I am making so much milk in the morning. I, once I got established, I would do that. And I'm like, wow, look at all my milk. But it is also very full of water because you have gone that longer stretch sleeping through the night and you're going to have a lot of water in there that's fine, but don't discredit your evening pumping session. That might be smaller volume, but that is rich and full of dense nutrients. So give yourself a pat on the back for that smaller, but nutrient dense milk as well. So if you are doing a combination or your baby has any type of interest of nursing, nursing and then pumping afterwards is the best practice to really get that stimulation in to get your hormones right that connection between you and baby and that and it's going to be signaling your brain to be making that milk even if your baby doesn't take much and is just kind of suckling if you can do that first and then pump that is absolutely amazing i did that for a little while and then unfortunately that wasn't an option for us um, but when it is an option, definitely utilize that. And then just to share some more updated information, when I was a NICU nurse, we would hand out handouts about fenugreek and how you can use that to increase your milk supply. When I was in the hospital, my lactation consultant updated me on some of the information where there's kind of a mixed message where it might help some, help some women and it might hinder some others. So just go ahead and do a little bit more research on the fenugreek before um, before um, starting to take that as a supplement. Okay, now I wanna share with you the absolute top thing that increased my supply. All the other things were amazing, wonderful. The pumping often is definitely up there. It is number two, but number one, which I believe really helped reestablish my milk supply when it crashed, was power pumping. So this is where you are going to set aside an hour of time because that is how long it's going to take. I would say get yourself a very good hands-free pumping bra for this or the other option is you can get an old sports bra, cut some holes and make sure you keep them small because you can always make the hole bigger. You want to keep it nice and supported and nice and tight and you can use a old sports bra as a hands-free pumping bra. But what you are going to do is you are going to pump for 20 minutes, hands on pumping the whole time, 20 minutes. Then you are going to rest for 10 minutes. Turn the machine off, turn your pump off, rest for 10 minutes. You're then going to start it again and you're going to pump for another 10 minutes, another rest time for 10 minutes, and last time another 10 minutes of pumping. So that adds up to 60 minutes. 20 pumping, 10 rest, 10 pumping, 10 rest, 10 pumping one hour and I would do that every day. Now again, I want to emphasize that pumping is a full 
time job. If you get to a point where this is too much, I understand. I am just giving you the tips and tools of what I was able to do to increase my supply. I usually would do this at night. I wasn't getting a lot of milk. By that last 10 minutes, I don't even know if anything really even came out, but what I was doing is I was stimulating and saying my baby's cluster feeding because my body is not making enough milk. And I would see it felt small at first, an extra half an ounce, an extra an ounce, and then I would see, especially in this chart on this app, that I would see this increase and that is what would give me um, an encouragement. So this is where I would um, see how many pumpings I was doing per day or I would have a nursing in there. So there would be how it, a nursing could replace a pumping, et cetera. For pumping, I could see that it was starting low and it was increasing slowly every day until I was getting up to the amount that I needed. And honestly, that was such an encouragement to see that increase. I started by writing it down on a piece of paper, not the same as this beautiful visual chart that you are making progress even if it feels slow. Okay, so now that I shared all of the things that helped increase my supply, I promise you they work. It sounds simple, but pump, 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 power pump. I promise you it does make a big difference and being able to see it on a chart that it feels like nothing's changing, it's the exact same, but seeing that little increase will give you that confidence to keep going and I would say a couple of weeks and you are going to see a massive difference from where you were to where you are now. I promise you, you're gonna thank me. Pump, pump, pump. This last year, even though we had a rough journey from being in the hospital to having to go to exclusively pumping to feeling like my milk was completely tanking and going away to reestablishing my milk to tanking again to reestablishing my milk it was a big emotional roller coaster but it was honestly so worth it i feel like i just dreamed of being able to nurse or at least be able to give my breast milk to my baby. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know I shared a lot of information and hopefully that you guys can take some of that and put it in your tool belt and it will help you along your pumping or your nursing journey. I feel so incredibly blessed and thankful that I've had this opportunity to be able to produce milk for my baby who is right over here and is ready to eat right now. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Share it and like and subscribe and we will see you guys in our next video. Go let your love multiply. Bye guys. So milk.